Arwan. Hello, sir. I still have a question, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Hello, 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 hello. There we go, it's going up and down now. Ruan, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. So I wanted uh, to ask, um, yes. how come for the population ecology, population ecology topic um, we did last time, how come we only started from, the, from number 10 or 11? We didn't do the one, two, and three, no, with those single digits. Just say again. Uh, so were we supposed to do activities like one, two, and three, and four for population ecology? Oh, uh, yeah. No, look, I don't think uh, in terms of the focus book. Um, I look at the, practicality yes, of, uh, at the practicality of all of the exercises. If I see the exercise is not going to add value, then, um, then, I, then I normally leave that out. Um, and you're going to see like yesterday's um, things that I started to add. Um, I'm t actually taking from past papers now, from grade 12 past papers, instead of using the focus book. We're still going to use the focus book a little bit, but where I can, I want it to look like the exam questions. So we're going to use the focus book less than we had previously. And so if there's an exercise in the focus book that I see that is not going to really add value to the lesson that I'm giving, then I normally don't ask it. Okay, so let's start with today's lesson. Uh, I want to go so through... Which activity were we supposed to start from? The... Which? Ruan, just ask your question again. No, sir, because I was wondering, um, I didn't do the answer. Which one were we supposed to start from? What was it like? uh, activity 11? Um, I'm yeah, not sure. That I'm was gonna... my first one I did. I'm going to have to go and check again. I can't recall uh, which one I gave you first. I'll, I'll have to double check on um, which activities I gave you. Okay. Um, yesterday, I placed an exercise on the Google Classroom. It was uh, from a prelim paper, uh, paper one, the Northwest paper, from 2019, last year. Okay, so I'm going to share that now and go through it. I did place the memo on to Google Classroom, so you guys can mark it separately, but I want to go through a few of the questions. Okay, so this first question uh, gives you some, let me just switch off my video. Okay, so this first question, 3.3, um, gives you a table and they tell you it's all gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect, so it's greenhouse gases. Uh, they give you carbon dioxide, give you methane, they give you nitrous oxide, ozone, and CFCs, uh, which also contributes to, of course, the hole in the ozone layer. Um, then but remember, the two aren't related. Um, CUC is also a greenhouse gas, but the hole in the ozone layer is, as I said to you previously, not the same as the, um, the greenhouse effect. It's two different problems. Ruan, you have a question before we continue? Is it for the pie chart, I didn't have a pro um, protractor. protractor, so I just can't estimate it. Okay. Um, so if you, if you, judge it plus minus. Look, at the end of the year, um, uh, or when we mark these exams, remember that it's always good to have a protractor with you and do it accurately. But no, no 
um, marker has a time to actually go and put down the protractor and actually measure each and every single circle. So if you take a look at carbon oxide, if I can see it's just above 50%, I'm happy. If I take a look at methane and I see it's, a, um, it's about 17%, um, and then I'm thinking to myself, okay, 17% is going to give me plus minus um, 22, 23 degrees, uh, uh, 30 degrees then I'm gonna judge it that way. Okay, so I'm not gonna go and actually measure physically every single one over there, but I'm gonna check, is it plus minus um, the size, the slice of the pie that it should be? Okay, so the first question was very easy. If you just think through it, they give you percentages and then they ask you to calculate these. So you simply, you add up all of these. Um, and all of those that they give you, and you know that it needs to equal 100%. So whatever is left is of course what is um, what B is, which is 17% of the contribution. So it's the second most uh, common greenhouse gas, um, but it's uh, compared to the carbon dioxide of 53%, it's actually still quite low. Okay, so, when you draw the pie chart, what are they looking for? So they're looking for the title. Okay, so you're gonna, gonna mark for the title. And that's something you guys normally, you tend to forget. Um, so please don't forget it, it's a mark. It's a mark in the back that doesn't actually give you that much, much to do. But if you don't put it, you're gonna lose a mark. Then for the drawing the pie chart, you actually only get one mark, um, then you get, um, up to five, uh, up to two marks, sorry, two marks for all five of the labels. And then sectors correctly calculated. So that's another thing that they normally do is I ask you to maybe show the calculation. And um, if I know that the degrees is plus minus right, then I know that I'm gonna get in, um, then I know your calculation is correct. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm in my driveway and I just want to pull in. Uh, I don't have a key with me. Just give me a, two seconds. Okay. So let's go on. Next question, explain what is meant by each of the following. Okay, so um, we didn't do food security yet, uh, but you can look up that definition for food security. And I want to go through it with you now because um, the food security has a very specific uh, definition. And if you leave out any of the parts, then you're not going to get the marks for that. Now, in this case, it counted for two marks. Um, What's important for me with food security, with the definition for food security, is that it refers to the access to food, yes, and must be adequate food, it must be safe food, it must be nutritious food for all the people all the time. Um, and that all the people all the time, that is extremely important. Um, you see, it doesn't help that I have food today and I have nutritious food today, but I have no nutritious food tomorrow or the day after. It also doesn't help that I have the right amount of food, but um, I have the right amount of food, but um, it's not nutritious. It's gotta be uh, for a balanced meal. And that's important. It's gotta be for a balanced meal. Okay, so all the food, um, all the time for all the people for a nutritious meal, and that's food security. The next one is the definition of a carbon footprint. Uh, so we have done the carbon footprint section uh, um, already. So what is a carbon footprint? It's a measure of the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions um, of an individual or of a population or a company per year. Okay, 
So two very easy definitions, uh, but definitions you have to know off by, by heart. Okay, just want to move some of my things here. Okay, then. Then it talks about deforestation. It is a permanent removal of um, a removal of trees in large numbers. And then you they ask you to suggest two reasons for deforestation. Okay, uh, Ruan, do you have a question? Yes, sir. I wanted to ask, um, could you just go back to the table? I'm sorry, the, the table for the pie charts. Yes, the table for the pie chart. Here we go. Let me just erase some of the scratching that I've done. Yes, what do you want to ask okay. about this table? This is about the heading. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, for the heading of the pie chart, I said, I kind of copied the, the title and said, pie chart showing the gases that contribute to, a, to greenhouse green effect. I'm gonna put in brackets percentage. Take a look over here. Um, if you take a look at the, the um, what they gave, it's, it's, it's just what you gave. So you gave the same as them. So there's no problem with that one, okay? Yes, sir. And can I see the carbon footprint definition? Okay, oh, yes. carbon footprint definition. The one they gave in the memo says, it's a measure of the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions. That, that would include methane and all of those things. Um, yes, and sir. then, or, or they, then they take a look at what they said here. They also said that if you give an example of a greenhouse gas, so if you said, for example, carbon dioxide, you would also get that mark. Because that's why they put in brackets, example of a greenhouse gas. Of an individual uh, or a population or a company in one year. So what is your query I towards that? Because of the, the, yeah, I was kind of like what you said there because um. It was the measure of uh, the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions, an example of greenhouse. I was asking if you had to give the example. Okay, you didn't have to give the example. What they're saying there is well, by putting it in brackets, if you gave an example, uh, like carbon dioxide, um, if you said carbon dioxide, they would also give you the mark instead of uh, saying that are greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Yes, sir. So. Let's take a look at two reasons for deforestation. So urbanization, so we need space to live. So we, we take the plants out. Um, agricultural needs, we need places to, so we can plant food. Um, we need wood as a source of fuel. So we, uh, we chop down the wood, so uh, trees because we need the wood. Um, it can serve as timber for, um, and mining material. It can be used for medicinal uses. This is a common one in South Africa. And then we can also use it for interest, infrastructure or construction. Okay, then uh, second question there, explain two consequences of deforestation for an ecosystem. Okay, loss of habitat. Um, migration of organisms and um, the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide is disturbed because there's not enough photosynthesis. Uh, food chains are disturbed, species may die, species might migrate out of the area, degradation of the habitat leading to more erosion. We talked about the fact that if we take a look at any tree, um, two thirds of that tree is actually underground so it keeps the soil together. Um, and so that we get erosion when you remove the trees. Um, and then greenhouse gases emissions increase leading to global climate change. So any two of those, and they give you two marks per one because you have to give it and explain it. And so that gets you four marks for that question. Okay, then they ask you to read the extract on water. Okay, so today we're going to do water, uh, hopefully get to water quality and water availability, which we're going to spend a few lessons on. Um, but then it also includes global warming. Okay, so they say to us the amount of water on earth is constant. Is there a question from anyone? I hear, um, I hear noise, but I don't hear specific one. Yes. Uh, so I think you, you discussed it in an earlier lesson, but I forgot. I wanted to ask for the carbon footprint. It was the measure of the amount of greenhouse gas, um, greenhouse gas emitted, but 
So with the carbon, um, why is it called carbon footprint if like nitrous oxide is also a greenhouse gas and it's not yes. a root of carbon? But it doesn't have carbon inside it, yes. Um, so if we, let's go back to that, that chart and um, look, carbon footprint is one of these, um, yes, it, it's got an ecological importance, but the whole idea behind, behind the carbon footprint is like the big five. There's no, there's no scientific reason why we call them the big five. There's also, um, in terms of, uh, it's a marketing gimmick. And in terms of these gases, if you take a look at them, CFC's got car a little carbon in them. Um, ozone doesn't have carbon, nitrous oxide doesn't have carbon. Methane has carbon and carbon dioxide has carbon. And so for, for a large part, when, when the idea around a carbon footprint was created, um, they especially took a look at carbon dioxide because that was the most abundant one and that's the one that we're overproducing at the moment for, for most part. And so that's why they started calling it, the uh, why they decided to call it the carbon footprint. It's an easy one to control your carbon emissions. Um, and so that's why it stuck with the idea of um, a carbon footprint, not specifically because all of these gases contain carbon, but um, because carbon dioxide was the one leading to the most problems. So there's no scientific reason behind calling it carbon footprint. It, it was more for marketing purposes. And the idea was, that we, we're targeting carbon dioxide specifically because we can oh, okay. do things to, to control our carbon dioxide emissions a lot. Let's take a look at <laughs> this last question. So they say to you the amount of water on Earth uh, is constant but is unevenly distributed across the Earth. We are we are a country with very low, low rainfall. Uh, but if you take a look, for example, at our provinces, if you get, take a look at a certain area in Natal, they get a lot of rainfall. So South Africa annually receives on an average of 492 millimeters of rain, while the world average is 1,477 millimeters for other countries, most other countries, if you the, the average of between the countries. Scientists predict that with global warming, South Africa will experience much wetter seasons and much drier seasons. So we're going to have wetter summers, but drier winters, resulting in more floods and droughts. And according to the Department of Water and Environmental Affairs, the demand of water will exceed the supply in South Africa by 2025. Now, we're already experiencing it. Last year, the year before that, we already experienced it as well. A further problem adding to this demand is the decreasing of our water quality. So it's not just about water availability. It's also about the quality of the water. And please, let me go through the next section of work. You'll see we're going to discuss quality and availability as two separate sections. One of the main causes for this is industries that produce waste that can affect the amount of nutrients like minerals that land in the water. And we're going to talk about a concept here called eutrophication. Eutrophication. And uh, um, you're going to know, I have to know what eutrophication is, and, uh, is very well. Okay. Now, people, then define global warming. Global warming is the increase in the temperature of the earth because of an enhanced greenhouse effect or an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. So let's talk about the fact that they say enhanced greenhouse effect. Remember, we already have the greenhouse effect. We already have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and it's a good thing that we have the greenhouse um, uh, effect because it keeps our temperatures quite even. If we didn't have carbon dioxide, we would have extremely low temperatures on Earth and extremely high temperatures on Earth but we have quite even temperatures on Earth because of the um, greenhouse effect. The, the problem is the enhanced greenhouse effect. If we say enhanced, it means that we're adding more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than we're supposed to. And because of that, um, because of that, we have global warming. 
Now, the second question is on the topic that we're going to do, uh, hopefully today still, if we still have enough time, and I don't know what our time is looking like at the moment, it hasn't warned me yet. It says, despite the effect of an increase in nutrients and have, have on the result of runoff from fertilizers and pesticides, also state the name of the effect. So that's eutrification, eutrification, and there, there the word is, eutrification, we call it eutrification. So what basically happens is that if there's a large amount of nutrients, so there's a lot of food getting into the, the fresh water. And then because of that, algae love the extra nutrients and they start using it. And they start, there's a population explosion of algae in the water. And then that blocks the sunlight. Okay, so um, if I could make a, a quick drawing of this as well. Um, just add a page here. Uh, new page after and um, page style blank. Okay, so let's say this is a water body. So we've got some water over here. Okay, and you've got some runoff into the water of phosphate, especially phosphates and nitrates, especially those things that we contain in our feces. Also in soaps, we use it a lot in soaps. So you get extra um, nutrients getting into here. Then you get algae growing um, and algal bloom, uh, the population of uh, explosion of algae. And as you get a population explosion of algae, none of the sunlight that we have, it actually gets into, into here. None of the sunlight can get into the lower sections. And so because you get um, less sunlight in the lower down section, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of dead plants. The plants that are lower down is gonna start dying. And that leads to an increase in bacteria, in decomposing bacteria. And they use a lot of oxygen so you have a lot of oxygen loss over here. So no more oxygen in here because you don't get photosynthesis down there. And then you get, what's gonna happen is you get your fish starting to, to die. Okay, so because they don't have enough oxygen in the water. Now, if you've ever had an aquarium without a, um, air pump, you would realize that um, water doesn't hold much oxygen. And so once we have less oxygen in the water, it's very, it's very difficult for those fish to survive. And so they die because of a lack of oxygen and this whole process is called eutrification. Okay, let us um, move on to, if there's no, uh, no questions on this section, I want to move on to water availability and water quality and get as far with that as possible today. Um, just get the right screen here. Okay. Okay, so impact, uh, human impact on water availability, we're gonna go through first. Okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about when we use, what, what do we use water, water for? We use it for washing, cooking, we use it for irrigation of our forests, our mining, our industrial processes. A lot of water is used in um, uh, electricity generation because you heat up the water to form steam, which in turn drives a turbine. And also we need it for our ecosystems in South Africa. But now, we do certain activities such as constructing dams, the destruction of wetlands, poor farming practices. Um, uh, we use boreholes which pump the water on the surface and then gets evaporated. Uh, if we plant plants, exotic plantations, if we plant plants that use a lot of water, that's a problem. And also pollution of the water decreases the water availability in South Africa. If water continues to be used at the current rate, we will start to have um, reached the limit of our fresh water supply by 2025. And it's then a limiting resource for the growth and development of the country. 
and in ways to sustain water availability in South Africa by finding might be finding water resources, uh, supplies of water, reducing the demand of water by um, practicing water conservation and then improving the management of water resources. Okay, so what human activities have led to a negative impact of water systems in South Africa? Pollution, poor farming practices is a big one, damming practices, uh, is a big, big problem. One of our leading dams that we have in in our area is the Val Dam. Now, the problem with the Val Dam is if you take a look at any good dam, and any good dam it needs to be deep so that it can have contain a lot of water, but the surface area needs to be small so that not a lot, a lot of evaporation takes place. But unfortunately, what has happened, for example, like in the construction of the Val Dam, the construction of the Val Dam is very shallow, but very wide. And so what is happening there is it co does contain a lot of water, but the surface area exposed to light is so, uh, to, to, to the energy of the sun is so much bigger so a lot of evaporation is taking place and that's bad, that is really bad uh, planning uh, in terms of water use. Okay, um, and then some other questions, in which way do you use water at home? So think about cooking, cleaning, cleaning of your clothes, um, and then how can you use water more wisely? Think about um, taking a shower, instead of taking a bath. A ba an average bath takes about 60 liters of water. An average shower takes about 10 to 15 liters of water. Um, so it's, it's a huge difference. Um, also, when you guard, if you're gardening, um, think about when you are, when you are actually um, watering your plants. Are you watering it during the day where there's a lot of evaporation happening? Or are you, are you watering it late in the afternoon so it can soak into the swell and be used for photosynthesis the next day? Think about what type of plants you are planting. Um, are you planting water-wise plants that use less water, that conserve water, that store water, instead of um, having some um, exotic plants that use up too much water? Okay, so water use in is, is, as we said, washing, cooking, cleaning. We use it for irrigation of uh, crops, uh, for food that we eat, uh, also for exotic, um, um, okay, if we're planting exotic trees for timber, that uses a lot of water. Um, a lot of the, the construction material that we use in South Africa is pine, and pine uh, uses a lot of water. A lot of the other exotic plants that we have is, for example, your eucalyptus trees. They have a lot of eucalyptus trees in South Africa that are not indigenous to South Africa, and they use up a lot of water. We use it in mining and industrial, and that leads to acid mine drainage. We also use it in generating electricity because we heat it by burning coal, and that turns into steam, and then the steam it drives a turbine. Um, we also have, in that sense, a lot of thermal pollution happening. What is thermal pollution? So we heat that water, and before it cools down properly, we actually put it back into the water system. And because of the increased temperatures, we actually also impact on what we already talked about, eutrophication. Okay. And then um, Building of dams. We talked about the building of dams. Uh, we will build dams so that we can provide water to, of course, um, uh, to to places, towns. Also, we can use that water for hydroelectricity. But poor damming practices is not good. Okay, so Ruan, you have a question. Yes, sir. Um, what do you say about the temperature and eutrophication? I didn't understand that, sir. Okay, so um, increased temperatures of the water 
leads to higher metabolic rates. And higher metabolic rates leads to um, more population of algae. And that's why it's also linked to eutrophication. So it has to do with, if the water is warmer, then um, it's, um, you get higher metabolic rates of these organisms. And so it does the same as adding extra nutrients. By adding extra nutrients, you're giving them a better environment. By adding extra temperature, you're giving them a better environment because they can actually increase their metabolic rates and then growth is a lot more. Okay. Okay, so damming. 70% uh, of the running, okay, we have about 10 minutes there, so we're only gonna get through water availability today. And nothing on water quality yet. So construction of dams helps catch about 70% of the runoff surface of South Africa. Dams flood areas um, above the dam wall, uh, but disturb the flow down, uh, further down. So damming, yes, I'm gonna have a lot of water over there, but I'm gonna have less water over here and further down. And so you need to remember if I'm taking water and I'm damming it in one place, there's an increase in the one place, but then there's a decrease in the, the second. This can disturb and destroy ecosystems above and below the dam wall and increases the amount of water lost by evaporation because large surface area is exposed then to, to evaporation. Okay, so poor farming practices. This is, um, this is typical of what happens. A lot of that water is going to evaporate. If you, if you water that at the wrong time of the day, you're getting a, a lot of water that's not getting through the plant, through transpiration and through the process of photosynthesis. But actually a lot of it just is evaporating. Better systems would be a dripping system where you have a dripping system that runs below with pipelines below the plants that is giving them water directly where the roots are, but below the leaves. So we reduce the amount of um, evaporation happening. Okay, some other problems, destruction of wetlands occur when they are drained. Uh, so we use it for farming and mining and that's happening here in Boxburg ha is happening a lot uh, that uh, we having less and less of our wetlands because of construction. Luckily, there also is quite a few places that is conserving our wetlands. And yes, we do have wetlands. Uh, that whole area where the Bocky Park is built on, as well as the area running towards, the, there's a very clean out area running towards the Boxwick Stadium and in the Boxwick Stadium area itself. That's actually all wetlands. They may have water abstracted for irrigation of crops or become polluted by chemicals from agricultural mines and industry. Uh, later in this section, we're gonna talk about acid mine drainage. We actually at Sunbit Park High School discovered a few years ago that we can't water um, the, the grass or the sports field anymore with the borehole because of acid mine drainage. We actually killed the grass instead of letting them grow if we use the underground water then 50% of South Africa's wetlands have already been destroyed. Poor farming practices such as growing crops that require lots of irrigation, um, using overhead sprinklers that I just talked about, um, and then overgrazing areas, which causes runoff um, and soil erosion. That means um, we're gonna get what we call silting, silting of the um, rivers. Uh, if there's a lot of erosion, all of that extra soil runs into the, the, the rivers and the dams and then fills up the rivers and then there's less space for the water to move in. Okay, um, there's some fine trees over there. Um, and so um, that, that also leads to a lot of evaporation. They're not made for South Africa. They're not made for our conditions. These plants uses a lot, uh, use a lot more water than our, our local plants do. And then also boreholes, uh, you're taking water that's deep down, that is not evaporating. Now you're putting it on top of the, the, the ground and it's evaporating all of that water. Okay, so that bore, uh, uh, poor borehole practices can also contribute to, to water loss. Um, and then exotic plantations we talked about. 
and so we should rather try and plant more indigenous trees than these exotic trees. Okay, so pollution is another factor um, and then it reduces the quality of water, which in turn reduces the availability of water. Um, if water continues to be used at the current rate, South Africa will reach its limit by 2025. As we said, we've already seen parts of that happening, and that will then hinder the growth of our country negatively, our economic growth as well. So what can we do? Um, we need to practice water conservation. Okay, so I'm going to show you something here in terms of water conservation, a few things. Uh, it's always good to show it in practice. Um, let me just stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Let me, okay. So over here, um, I'm just going to try and show it nicely. Let me turn around my screen. Okay, so there's a tank over there. Um, and that tank, you can see there's a pipe, pipe leading there. Okay. And that, that tank actually takes water from our washing machine over there. Okay. And then from that tank, okay, so let me just get it in focus. From that tank, I'm gonna go down. You see there's a pipe there, and that pipe then runs down and then runs into my runs into my garden. Uh, let me just see if I can get the I can't see what's on the screen. Runs into my garden with a dripping system. And so practices like that, that saves a lot of water. So water that would have been lost going down the drain actually gets into my garden, which means that I don't have to use other water to water, to water my garden because it's already on a dripping system. It's already conserving water. Other things that I can uh, also with water conservation, let me show you here. Okay, this is, I uh, just bought this today. This is a Maloti aloe. And aloes, um, you can see the fresh leaves, saves a lot of water. Okay, so water wise gardening. So if we garden, we're gardening that, um, with water wise plants. Okay, um, and if you go right around my garden, you can actually see I'm going to turn around here. Um, indigenous tree above me. Okay, so this is a thorn tree. It's the monkey thorn um, that we have here. And then I'm going to show you one more. And this one behind me, uh, this is the career boom. Okay, so if we're planting indigenous, we're planting, uh, we're planting things that are, and I showed you the spectrum, spectrum previously, which I started propagating as well. So the spectrum, I still have a piece that we worked with here. Um, and so that is, that is all things that contribute to, to better practices in terms of Gardening. Okay. Um, share my screen once more. Okay. So that basically is that for today for um, for water availability. Tomorrow we're going to focus more on water quality. Okay. Um, I'm not uh, just go watch the videos that I did publish already on Google Classroom as well. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll have a homework section again to tomorrow together with the water quality section. Okay. Any questions? We have about a minute left. Okay. Then thank you for joining me today, and, and I will see you tomorrow during this time. Yes. Quick question before our time is up. I was just saying thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Alia. Thank you, Faith. See you tomorrow.